Sean and they are doing carry on, okay? Uh, last class we have started with module four. Now a quick revision, why we need inter-VLAN? Inter-VLAN is needed in order to allow a network traffic to be forwarded from one VLAN to another VLAN. We have discussed all the concepts of the VLAN. Last class, how it can be configured, what's the benefits of segmenting the network into sub-networking, we say, called VLAN. Main advantages, we are going to reduce the broadcast domain, improve the bandwidth and the network performance by dividing or segmenting our network into multiple sub-VLANs. Now, in general, we have three options or there are three inter-VLAN options. First one, it's not used anymore. Legacy inter-VLAN routing. Simply, we need a physical interface for every VLAN on the router. So as we see here, we have router one, we have one interface, physical interface for VLAN 10, and another interface for VLAN 20. Main problem, we have a limited number of interfaces of the router. So simply, it's not scalable because we have a very limited capacity. So legacy system is not implemented anymore. Just we have just explained the process only quickly. Now, router is on a stick, on a stick. One second, please. So, router on a stick simply will, let me say, overcomes the limitation of the legacy inter-VLAN. What's the router on a stick, inter-VLAN routing? Simply, we need one physical interface. Now, we can create sub-interfaces, sub virtual sub-interfaces, on a single physical interface. Now, these sub-interfaces will be assigned an IP address, subnet mask will serve all the hosts belong or associated to specific VLAN as a gateway. So it will provide all the routing services. So what we need here, a physical interface. This interface can be configured into multiple sub-interfaces. Keep in your mind one more time, sub-interfaces are virtual interfaces. Let me say, based on or associated with a single physical interface. Now, we need an IP and we need a subnet. This sub-interface will be configured for each VLAN in our network. So, it will be associated to VLANs according to the requirement or the number of the VLANs we have it in our network. Now, main problem, we cannot scale it more than 50 VLANs. It cannot adequate more than 50 VLANs in case we have more than a 50 VLANs in our network sequence. Last solution was inter-VLAN routing on layer 3 switch. Now, layer 3 switch is a device, is a switch, normal switch, but main features, it's providing layer 2 services and layer 3 routing operation. So we can call it multi-layer switch or we can call it layer 3 switch. So it's a switch acting as a router and the switch at the same time. Now, main concept of layer 3 inter-VLAN switch is to use a switch virtual interfaces. So virtual interfaces will be configured on layer 3 switch. Every let me say switch virtual interface will be associated with a specific VLAN. And this is the best practical or a practice solution for a large size organization and the mid-size organizations as well. Now here we have covered the benefits of player 3 switch. 
So let us jump and cover the remaining part. We have stopped here, last class. Now what we are going to talk, we are going to discuss how router on a stick can be configured. Before we see the configuration, commands, let us explore the scenario we have it here. Now remember, between the switches and the devices, the router, the axis will be a trunk link within a host and the switch, the link will be an axis link. So we have a trunk link and we have axis link. Now in this scenario, we have router one, R1, R1, gigabit ethernet 001, this one interface is connected to S1. Now what we have here, we have a trunk link through fast ethernet 05. Now S1, fast ethernet 01, is connected to S2 through F01 as well. Now, so we have a different BCs on different VLAN, VLAN 10, VLAN 20. So what we want, we want to allow VLAN 10 hosts to be able to communicate and send the traffic to another host located on different, on different VLAN, such as the scenario we have it here. So in order to route between different VLANs, router or R1 gigabit Ethernet 001 interface will be logically logically divided into three sub-interfaces. Why three? I have only two VLANs here. VLAN 10, VLAN 20, management VLAN. Remember, the management VLAN will not use the user traffic. So we need one more sub-interface for the management VLAN. So according to the table here, we need to create a three sub-interfaces on gigabit 001. First one, giga001.10, why.10, we'll talk about it, dot 20 and dot 30. Now, dot 10 associated with VLAN 10, default gateway address is 192.168.10.1, Prefix 24, 20 VLAN, 192.168.21 with a prefix 24. And finally, for the management VLAN, we can assign any VLAN as a management. We can have any ID for the management VLAN. So we have used the ID 99 with the following default IP address. Now, let us assume that router switch one and switch two have the initial basic configuration correctly. Now, according to this situation, without router and stick configuration, now BC1 and BC2 cannot bing each other. Why? Each one actually consider a different network or sub network, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. In this scenario here, without router and stick, only S1 and S2 can what reach each other because we have a direct link, a trunk link between the switches. So in order to enable a devices to bring each other and the trunk, trunking and the router must be configured for inter-VLAN routing process. So what we are going to configure the router to work as, or what's the method, the option we are going to configure the router in order to allow a different VLANs to exchange the network traffic, we are going to configure it based on router on a stick. Remember, we need what? Sub-interfaces. So we need to complete the following steps before on switch one and switch two as well. Remember, on switch one, we have fast Ethernet 01, 05, 06. On a switch two, we have 01 and fast Ethernet 018. So what we should do? First one, we need to create and name the VLAN on each switch, S1 and S2. So we need to create VLAN 10, 
20, assign an MV for VLAN 10 and 20. We need to create the management interface, VLAN 99 and the IP of the VLAN 99. Now we need to configure the access boards. Where is the access board? On S1, the access board is F06. Now, where is the access point in access board, sorry, in S2, past Ethernet 018? Once we configure the access boards, we need to configure also the trunk boards. On S2, we have only single trunk board. On S1, we have two trunk boards, 01 and 05. So let us see all these steps on S2. For us to remember, same configuration will be configured on S1 switch as well. So on S2, before we see, on S2 we have one access board, one a trunk board. So first step, create the VLAN. So how the VLAN will be created? At the exit mode, VLAN followed by the ID, so VLAN 10, the name is VLAN 10, done, we have created VLAN 10. Now we need to create VLAN 20. VLAN followed by the ID 20, name followed by the name of the VLAN, LAN 20, exit. Now we have done with step one here. Step two, create the management interface. Now let me just highlight to you where is the management interface commands? It started from this line until this line. So VLAN 99, name management, we exit the VLAN sub-interface, then we need to access the VLAN Interface 99, interface VLAN 99, IB address, subnet mask, no shutdown to activate, exit, default gateway now is non 192.168.99.1 on the router. Okay, this is a sub interface IB. Now we need to configure the access board and the trunk port. So the access board is 018, so interface past Ethernet 018, switch port mode access, switch port access will be associated with VLAN 20. No shutdown in order to activate, so now we have done with this part for BC. We will repeat the same process, but as a trunk here, interface past Ethernet 01, switch port mode, trunk, no shutdown, exit the interface configuration. Now S2 is ready. Same process, same scenario, except of the IB will be different here on S1, and the interface for the access will be fast Ethernet 06, and we have two trunk interface should be configured on S1. You have any question here? Now we need to configure R1. Remember, for R1, we need the three sub interfaces for 10, 20, and 99 VLANs. So the router on stick method requires you to create a sub interface for each VLAN. We need to create sub interface in order to be routed correctly. Sub interface created by using the command interface followed by the interface ID, period, dot, and the sub interface ID at the global configuration mode commands. Now, one more time, how will we create the sub interface? We will use the command interface followed by the interface name, fast Ethernet 01, for example, 
or gigabit zero zero one dot we'll use the period dot followed by the sub interface number usually as a convention the sub interface number will be the same as the vlan number so where is the sub interface number according to this table dot ten dot twenty dot thirty so interface gigabit zero 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 dot ten interface zero 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 dot twenty interface gigabit zero zero one dot thirty we have created the three sub interfaces in this case now every single interface will be configured by using these two commands. The first one, we need to enable the IEEE 802.1Q encapsulation. How it will be enabled? By using the command encapsulation.1Q followed by the VLAN ID. So encapsulation.1Q VLAN 10 20 99. Now, native is optional here. It's not a mandatory. So, simply this command configures the sub interface to respond to the tagged traffic, respond to 802.1q, encapsulated the traffic from a specific or a specified VLAN ID. Now, native keyword option. And will be only added in case we are going to set the native VLAN for the untagged traffic to different VLAN than VLAN 1. We know that the native VLAN by default is VLAN 1. In case we need to change the native VLAN, it should be added after the VLAN ID when we use this command. Once we done with the encapsulation, now we need to assign an IP address. Remember, the sub interface will save the VLAN as a default gateway, as a default gateway of the router. So how we assign an IP, IP address, followed by the IP address of the sub interface and the subnet mask. Two parameters here with the commands IP address. So this commands configure the IP version 4 of the sub interfaces. This address typically serves as a default gateway for the identified VLAN, as we have mentioned before. So we need to repeat these two commands for every single sub interface on our router. Once we have done with all the interfaces or the sub interfaces have been created. We need to enable the physical interface by using the command no shutdown. At the interface configuration. If the physical interface is disabled, all sub interfaces will be disabled by default as well. So let us see how it will be configured for router one. Now, suppose interfaces, we need to create a sub interface. So, interface gigabit 00, 1.10. So, this is the first sub interface. Now, description is an optional, it can be added. It's recommended to be added for the maintenance and a future use. So description, default gateway for VLAN 10. Now we need to activate the response to 802.1Q. So encapsulation, dot 1Q. What's the VLAN ID here? VLAN ID is 10. We need to add an IP address to the sub interface. So IP address 192.168.10.1, a gateway followed by the subnet mask. Now, where is the IP as a gateway? It's already here on this table. We'll repeat the same process for interface 20, encapsulation, IP address for the 
management interface as well. Finally, once we have done with all sub interfaces, we need to access the physical interface. So interface gigabit 001, description is a trunk to S1, no shutdown. So now it's enabled, all its sub interfaces are enabled for this interface as well. Now, this simple configuration, by the way, it's a simple configuration. It's very important for the final exam. So basic switch configuration, basic router, basic VLAN configuration are very important for the final exam. Keep it in your mind. Now, once we have done how we can verify the connectivity between BC1 and BC2. The router on stick configuration is completed now. After the switch trunk and the router sub interfaces have been configured, the configuration now can be verified from the host, router, and the switch. From the host, simply, connectivity can be verified by using the bing commands. It's a good idea first to verify IB configuration on the host so we can use the IB config. After that, we'll test that if BC1 on VLAN 10 can ping BC2 on VLAN 20. If the ping successfully, which means connectivity are created based on router and stick correctly between two different VLANs. Now, in addition to the ping between the devices, we can use show commands as well to verify and the troubleshoot router and stick configuration. We can use show IP route, we can use show interface or IP interface brief, sorry, show interfaces and show interfaces trunk. And you will see how all of these can be used when we discuss the troubleshoot issues of the VLANs on the last part of this class. Now, let me jump to last option, inter-VLAN routing using layer three switches. Now, inter-VLAN routing using router and stick method is simple to implement for a small and medium-sized organization. Create stop interface, create a VLAN, assign IP address, activate it, configuration is done. For a larger enterprise, usually we require faster, more scalable method to provide inter VLAN routing. Usually, larger enterprise will use layer three switch. So, layer three switches will be configured by using the switch virtual interface. So simply layer three switches uses the hardware based switching in order to achieve higher packet processing rate than the router. Also, it's commonly implemented in enterprise distrib uh, dis distribution layer wiring closets. Now, main capabilities of layer three switch include the following. Route from one VLAN, to another VLAN using multiple switches, virtual interfaces. Convert layer two switch port to layer three switch interface. So it will be a routed board only, not a switch board. So routed board is similar to a physical interface on Cisco iOS route. This board will be only a routed or a routing board. It's not a switch, switch board anymore. To provide inter-VLAN routing, layer three switches use a switch virtual interface. SVI are configured using the common interface VLAN, followed by the VLAN ID commands. This one will be used to create the management switch virtual interface on layer two switch now, layer three switch virtual interface must be created for each routable VLAN. So we need SVI for each routable VLAN in our network, as you will see now. 
So let us see at the scenario we have it here. We have layer three switch D1. Now D1 is connected to two hosts. Each host belongs or associated on different VLAN. D2 is in VLAN 20, as you see in this figure. So layer three switch will provide inter VLAN routing services to the two hosts. For VLAN interface 10, the default gateway 192.168.10.1. Now the IP is different for the VC. And for VLAN 20, gateway 192.168.21. So how we can configure D1 as a switch virtual interface rare tree switch to support the inter VLAN between PC1 on VLAN 10 and PC2 on VLAN 20. Simply, we need to complete the following steps. By the way, the configuration example was not added. I just update the slides and add the configuration bars to be clear for all the students. Step one, we need to create the VLANs. How many VLAN we have in this scenario? We have two. So we need to create on the router, okay? On the router, all of these configuration will be done at the router. So create VLANs, we have 10 and 20, so we'll create VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 on the router. Now, step two, create a switch virtual interface the IP address of the SVI will serve the respective VLAN as a default gateway. So now interface VLAN 10, it's a gateway or the default gateway for VLAN 10 here, IP address 192.168.10.1, followed by the not subnet mask, no shutdown to enable the interface. Interface VLAN 20, same configuration, different gateway, enable the interface by using no shutdown. Now we'll go to the next step. Next step, we need to configure the access port. Gigabit 106, gigabit 1018 for VLAN 10 and VLAN 12. So interface gigabit 106, description, it's an optional access port to PC1. So the switch port mode is access. And the switch port access associated with VLAN 10. Same process on different interface. 1018, switch port mode access, switch port access associated with VLAN 20. Once we have done, as you see, very similar to the configuration already discussed when we discuss the router on stick, main difference that we need to add one more step, enable the IB routing. So how we can enable the IB routing? Simply we will use the command IB routing at the global configuration mode. So issue IB routing commands at the global configuration mode to allow the traffic to be exchanged between VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. This command must be configured to enable inter VLAN routing on layer three switch for IBD4. If we have done with all the previous steps without enabling the IB routing, different PCs on different VLANs cannot reach each other. Now, how configuration can be verified? Same process, we can use the Bing. Before we can use the Bing, we can check the configuration at each host by issuing the IB config command. So we can use Bing, we can verify the configuration of each host 
with I beef config comments. No. If the VLANs are to be reachable by other layer 3 devices, so suppose we have a different layer 3 device and we need our VLANs to reach a different router now, then they must be advertised by using a static or dynamic routing. To enable the routing of layer 3 switch, a router board must be configured. Now, what's the problem here? Simply, we have another router here. A different router. So we need the devices in VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 to reach this router. So we need to configure a routing board at D1 and R1. So routed board is created on layer 3 switch by disabling the switch board feature on layer 2. The board will be used only as layer 3 switch board. Now, how it can be disabled? Simply no switch board command will be used. So configuring the no switch board interface, configuration commands on layer two, switch board will convert it into layer three switch board interface only. Then the interface can be configured with IB version four configuration to connect to a routed, to a router, sorry, or another layer three switch. So two steps simply, Disable the switch board, no switch board, add the interface configuration comments. Step two, configure the routed, routed board now, layer three interface with an IP address to be connected to another router or another layer three switch. So this is the scenario we have. We have now R1, and R1 connected to layer 3 switch by using gigabit 001. And at layer 3 switch, we have gigabit 101. So on this figure, the previously configured D1 layer 3 switch is now connected to R1. Now R1 and D1 are obtained, or are both, sorry, using open shortest path first routing protocol. And this one will be discussed in full details in T216, inshallah. Assume, or let us assume that the inter-VLAN has been successfully implemented on D1. Now, gigabit 001 on router one has also been configured and enabled. Additionally, now router one will using the open shortest path first to advertise its two networks 10.10.10.0. This network and 10.10. This one should be 20.0 as well because we have two interfaces connected to different interfaces on R1. So R1 will advertise about the network by using what? Open shortest path protocol. Now keep in your mind only OSPF routing configuration is covered in another course. In this module, OSPF configuration command will be given to you in all activities and assessment. It's not required you need to understand the configuration in order to enable the OSPF or routing. Just we are going to mention the steps to configure this scenario. We have R1 and D1, and we have a link between them. So to complete the configuration, complete the following steps to configure D1 to route with R1. First step, configure the router the routed board. So it should be a routed board by 
using no switchboard command to convert the board from layer two to layer three switchboard only. We need to assign an IP address and subnet mask. Finally, enable the board, no shutdown. Enable routing, IP routing at the global configuration mode. So we have done also. And the routing is enabled now in D1. Now we need to configure the routing by using the single area open shortest path phase version 2. Now, no need to see, just you need to know that we need to configure this routing protocol. Step 5 or step 4, sorry, sorry, verify the routing, show IP route command in order to make sure that the configuration is issued correctly. Finally, we can now check by using the Bing command if it's reachable or we can reach R1 from a host, by the way, not even from the switch. Last part, now some troubleshoots issues related to the inter-VLAN routing. So there are a number of reasons why an inter-VLAN configuration may not work as expected. All are related to the connectivity issues. First, we need to check the physical layer in order to resolve any cabling issue or wrong board issue. Now, if the connection correct, we do not have any cabling problem, then we can troubleshoot our VLAN according to this table listed below. So in case there is no connection problem, I'm talking about a physical cable connectivity, then we will use the list in the table for other common reasons why the inter-VLAN connectivity may fail. So usually we have four issues or four scenarios should be tested and it might be the reason why our VLAN having a connectivity problem. First one, missing VLAN. Some of the VLANs was not created. So simply how we can fix this case, we can create the VLAN or recreate the VLAN. Ensure the host port is assigned to the correct VLAN as well. So we have a created VLAN 10, but our host is not associated with that VLAN. So it's a problem. How we can verify all of these points? We will use show VLAN brief with an option brief. Show interfaces, switch port commands, and finally we can verify the connectivity through the bank comments. Second scenario, we have a switch transport issue. How it can be fixed? Ensure the transport are configured correctly. Ensure port is a transport and it's enabled. How we can verify the configuration of the transport? We can use show interface trunk or show running config commands. Next case, the switch access board issue. We have assigning a correct VLAN to the access board. Make sure you have assigned the correct VLAN, sorry, to the access board. Ensure the board is an access board and it's enabled. Host is incorrectly configured sometimes in the wrong subnet. So how we can check or fix the cases, show interfaces, switch board commands, show running config interface, config for the last point. Finally, router configuration issues. First scenario, the router sub interfaces is incorrectly configured. 
So how we can verify that configuration? Show IB interface brief. Router sub-interfaces assigned is assigned to the VLAN ID, the correct VLAN ID. So show interfaces. So let us see the four cases and the problem issues. Now what we have here, we have a router on switch. We have a three sub interfaces on gigabit 001, sub interface 10, sub interface 20, and sub interface 30. 10 for VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 99, gateway or default IP address for each sub interface. Now we have two trunk links and we have two access links as well. Now, are you missing VLAN? Now, if we have used show interface fast Ethernet 06 switch port, we have issued show interface for 506 switch port. Now, according to the scenario, this switch port should be configured for VLAN 10. So the interface fast Ethernet 06, VLAN is 10. Now, when we issue show interface, fast Ethernet 06, switch port, what we have here, we have an error that access mode VLAN 10 inactive. So we have missing VLAN. VLAN 10 is not created in other way. So this is one of the reasons here for the connectivity failure. So an inter-VLAN connectivity issue should be caused by missing VLAN. The VLAN could be missing if it was not created or if it was accidentally deleted or it's not allowed on the trunk link. So when the VLAN is deleted, any port assigned to that VLAN will become inactive. They remain associated with the VLAN even if it's inactive, but we can see that the status of the VLAN now, it's inactive here. Until you assign them to a new VLAN or recreate the missing VLAN. Recreating the missing VLAN would automatically reassign the host to it. So we can use show interface, interface ID switch port command to verify the VLAN membership of the port by checking the access mode of the VLAN. So what's the problem here? VLAN 10 is inactive. So everything is correctly configured. There is no issue, but we do not have a VLAN 10. It should be created. It deleted by mistake or it's not activated and somehow, or it's not allowed on the trunk. So it's a block VLAN. Second case, a switch trunk port issue. Now, how many trunk port we have on S1 here? According to this figure, how many trunk port we have? We have two, 0, 05 and 0, 01. Now, if we simply issue the command show interface trunk, the output should list all the details for all the trunk ports on S1. So according to the output here, a details listed belongs only to fast Ethernet 01. So we have what? A missing port 05. 05 should be listed as well when we issue this command. So this is the main failure problem here. So another issue for the inter-VLAN routing include misconfigured switch port. 
in legacy inter VLAN solution, it could be caused when the connecting router board is not assigned to the correct VLAN. However, with router and stick solution, the most common use is misconfigured the trunk board. Verify that the board connecting to the router is correctly configured as a trunk link by using show interfaces or show interface trunk command. So we have two trunk link here, 0, 1 and 0, 5. What we have when we issue the command, only 0, 1 was listed. So the problem that fast Ethernet 0, 5 is not configured correctly as a trunk port. So if that port is missing from the output, examine the configuration of the board with show running config interface. What we should add here, fast ethernet, zero, five in this scenario. So we can verify all the configuration, make sure it's the trunk port, and correctly configured. Next case is a switchboard access issue when the problem is suspected with a switch access board configuration. Use verification commands to examine the configuration and identify the problem. Simply here, when we issue show interface fast Ethernet 06 switchboard, the access mode here is VLAN 1. According to the configuration, it's showing me that it's a VLAN 1, but it should be which VLAN actually? It should be VLAN 10, not 1. One more time, based on this scenario, it should be VLAN 10. Last scenario, Router configuration issues. Simply, we have assigned incorrect VLAN ID. So, router on stick configuration problem are usually related to the sub interface misconfiguration. Verify the sub interface status using show IB interface brief commands. Verify the switch VLAN each of the sub interface is on by using show interfaces commands. And is useful, but it generate a great deal with additional unrequired output. Now, if we have using show interfaces command, we will have a long or more details output. What we can, we can simply filter the output by using the byte and include keyword. So for example, show interfaces include only gigabit 802.1 queue. So what we have seen here according to the output, protocol is up, board is functional, Ethernet 00120 is up, and it's assigned to VLAN 20. Now, sub-interface 99 with VLAN 99 as well, but for sub-interface now 10, what's the VLAN? Is 100, which should be actually 10 matter. So we have here a misconfiguration issues on the sub-interface, VLAN ID number. This is the end of module four. Now, how many classes left? Two more classes, inshallah.